Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Laura Campbell Show. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here on this special call, um, special day, special time, with a special guest. I'm so excited. Today is, as you may know, uh, the Lionsgate Portal, August 8th, 2018, a uh, really high frequency, high energy day, and the beginning of, you know, some people say in the beginning of the new chapter of your life. So I asked um, my friend Kimberly last week, this was just like a spontaneous thing, like, hey, the Lions game is coming up. Would you like to be a guest on my show for it? She said, sure. So um, I, I really wanted um, Kimberly to be on to talk about the Lions Gate, the energies, as well as do a transmission or activation of some sort to help us to move forward with ease. And um, so anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> But first of all, Kimberly, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's been a while, so I'm so glad that uh, you had the time, you know, because it was so short notice. So thank you so much for accommodating me and, and being available. So thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know Kimberly, she's been on our show many times when it was called uh, Awaken to Happiness Now. <laughs> um, we've just changed it, you know, a little bit just to the Laura Canfield show. Um, and so Kimberly, if you don't know, is an everyday mystic and she's known as the healer's healer. She's the sacred witness to the inner awakened mastery. I am retonements. She is an internationally known visionary teacher, artist, and transformational healer with 30, probably 30 plus years experience. And Kimberly witnesses the matrices of the divine and not so divine. She uses this awareness to transmit multidimensional healing frequencies infused in light codes, and she holds space to assist the awakening of your mastery purpose for its highest expression, bypassing the rational mind and clearing obstacles to destiny embodiment. And Kimberly's transformational I am retonements are received from greater aspect and gifted to humanity. And these retonements speak directly to your core essence, activating DNA and allowing your master self to retone your individual individualized energy signature and Kimberly's sessions as you'll see today um, accelerate life-changing solutions by transcending destructive energetic matrices so that your divine essence is fully empowered so we're gonna ask Kimberly a little bit about what does that mean and what's been going on in your life since the last time we met oh wow lots of things have been going on in my life <laughs> So do you want to know what it means of the work I do, or do you want to know what this energy portal that, or a little bit of all of it? Uh, a little bit of all of that would be great. Okay. So just actually this week, it's really interesting because I really started my own membership back up and doing the calls. So the package created like from the most recent hot off the press stuff, okay? It's the energy that's here right now. And what I realized about myself, as long as I've been doing this, what they showed me was, I have the capability to connect to source codes. Mm -hmm. And it's creation codes, it's all the same thing. I have called these things all kinds of different codes. <laughs> but it's basically to connect to that. And so I could, I saw where it's like I can stand in the middle of the bridge and connect to that, touch that. And so I'm like a transmitter. So it's like a, a to sequenize, like what those, we, you know, when we used to have receivers and turn tables and all that. Yeah. From the knobs. I never understood what they did, but I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it is what I do. Now and you get it. So, it doesn't matter if people, whatever it is that they need, wherever it's coming from, I can tap into that through that group that I work with. It's called the greater aspect. And then I realized, and somebody told me this like 12 years ago, probably, that I didn't come from other places, that I came straight from the Creator God Committee this last time around. And, and at that time, I was doing some work that was all about beliefs and I just thought, oh yeah, yada, yada, just clear my beliefs and I need to go on with this. And I didn't really understand what it meant. And now I'm starting to understand it more and more. Mm -hmm. I worked enough on my own ego that I can actually say that now because before saying that seemed 
so narcissistic and so egoic to me that it was like those filters that society has put into us. And so I, I get it now. So I get it and that's, it's like I have studied so many things, tried so many pathways and religions and whatever. They were all fun. I understood them. I understood why, why the people that were there got it. But I always left feeling like I was missing something and I didn't feel like the other people did in the room. But it's because I didn't come from that bandwidth. You know, it's like, even when people talk about all this twin flame stuff, that didn't exist where I came from. It's like, we are our own twin flame and we're in the octave of unity soul. So I really, my last go around, that is the way I perceive it today. That's where I went. That's where I came from. I don't know how long I sat out there <laughs> before I decided to embody and come back. But I'm just getting that. I'm just getting that after all of this time and all of doing this. And I'm watching these children that are coming in that are from that realm. And they, they're they so much clearer. Their consciousness is so much clearer. You know, I had, because the time period I came in and the rest of us, I think we were all, everybody on this call, I'm sure was born before 2012. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So we came in bandwidths of, distorted consciousness that was out there. And so we had to go, you know, through that skit here. So, it, so, and that's because we said we would come at that time to do that. So that's what it is that I'm doing. It's like, that's what my work does. That's what, and when I, you know, I use it, I like so much wouldn't use the I word and that that sounded so conceited. And, you know, I'd hear all these people tooting their own, look at me horn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly i realized when i was creating this package i dropped out of telesummit and the last one i was on was 8 8 last year was the 8 8 one last year so i i didn't realize that till yesterday and uh -huh. i thought isn't that interesting a whole year stepping out and that and honestly that was part of what it was it was just like i can't do this anymore all of this you know stuff that we have to say it just felt so like not authentic and so not in integrity for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, you know, I'm being honest. And but now I get it. It's like, oh, okay, my my thing just did something. You went no, away. It's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Yeah. So all of a sudden, there was a telephone picture there, so yeah. I don't know what that was about. So anyway, that's what it is that I do. I'm able to tap into that, and it and I saw it like it's a whole sphere with all the bandwidths in it. And I can like put my finger in it and transmit the energy down. And so it goes to the person, the people, the group, wherever I'm working, the land. Mm -hmm. And it's what it is that's most relevant and most beneficial at the time. And it goes into the consciousness. So that's what I'm a walking portal. You know, it's like I'm an activated portal. And I've had through all this time period, all kinds of readings and people tell me that stuff and even like my human design my chart my astrology chart all of that says that but i i could i didn't know how to embody it yet mm -hmm. and it's like so that's what it is that i do and that's <laughs> what we'll do today it's awesome like, thank you and you know what i just realized is that this is the first time that we are actually um on video together uh, yeah, that's right. I haven't done your Zoom with you. <laughs> no, because, I mean, and somebody asked me, like, why don't you just do the Instant Tell Seminar? And, and you know, it's like, because um, it's boring for me, you know? So for me, I like to see people. I like to see that engagement. I like to see, like, if you're bored, okay, fine. I want to know, so then I can change something. But, you know, for me, it's much more interactive and engaging, and you get a better sense of the people that you're working with as well. Yeah. Right? You can see the lot in their eyes. <laughs> exactly. And for me, you know, I am normally, when I'm engaging with people, a very bubbly type of person, you know, like energetic and energized yeah. and happy, you know, and when I can't see people, at, you know, I tend to like go off, you know, and it's like, I, I want to be present, you know. So. Yeah, Ron, it is about being present. I like the Zoom thing too. It's like, I, I really like this live thing, you know, 
doing yeah. it this way. It feels more connected than to the people that we show up and then we're just like, oh, we're real people. We're embodied in these real people that are sitting here in these embodiments. Exactly. And and then for me, you know, the, the whole, this whole, you know, the past couple of months, right, it has been really intense, right? So leading up to today, um, you know, June was, I, I'll be honest, it was hell for me, you know, and July was better. <laughs> Um, and so now it's like, all right, we're into the 8-8 portal, right? And so as I was, you know, getting ready for today, getting ready, like just all the energies for right now um, have been really, in some cases, topsy-turvy, right? Up and down, right? And at the same time, especially today, there's, there has been that switch, you know, of the energy has shifted to creation, mode more and uh, moving forward um, and, and it's like a whole new paradigm has just it changed you know today and it's like and, and you know in the morning I was a little you know mm, wishy-washy and like you know had some moments of fear-based thinking and all that stuff but by the evening and you know a couple of like little couple of hours ago it changed, you know, so there's a lot happening on the planet right now, especially with the energies from today and going into, there's an eclipse on Saturday, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think Mercury, Mercury is going to go direct as well at some point, but, you know, it's like, there's just so Yeah, much. we've got all these planets that are retrograde right now. So, you know, the whole Lion Gate thing, okay, I think this is probably why you asked me to be on here, because yes. I know that you want the truth. Okay, it's like you're very aligned with that, and it's like I went in earlier and channeled. I sat down and went, Okay, take me to this consciousness of what this really is. Mm -hmm. Um, because I can get on here and I could mimic and parrot and say a bunch of BS that a lot of people have said. <laughs> okay, I could do that, mm -hmm. <laughs> or it's like, What is this energy really about? Okay. So when I sat down and said, take me, take me to the energy of what all of this is, because I'm not an astrologer. I dabble in astrology. I've been an astrologer in other lifetimes. I would never even pretend to be one because it is such, to me, it's a lifetime study, many lifetime studies that you embody. I had too much to do to just focus on that in this lifetime. So I play with it, but I'm able to connect to the planets and bring in what it is that they're telling me in the moment of what the energy is doing. And quite honestly, this whole um, sphere of consciousness, this creation consciousness that has been created in humanity's um, timeline, mind, bandwidth around the landscape, mm -hmm. it's a blending. It's a blending of, a, of several different ingredients that have came together okay so it so there's when i went into it earlier they showed me like the fall of atlantis and that how in that time period they were so connected to the gateways the portals the syrian energy the lyran energy comes in really strong for me during this time period you know it's the lines the feline energy mm -hmm. that are the line people and they are blue ray energy. They connect to me stronger. Maybe it's my own personal chart. But those energies of gateways come in different for different people. And quite honestly, the, some of the texts that are put out that says this alignment, this alignment, and this alignment happens, you really can't find that in, <laughs> in the planets and in the astrology, okay? But it's a channeling, and it came from esoteric concepts of the central sign and what that's happening. But if you look at the graphs of it, it's really not there today. It may have been there another day, okay? Mm -hmm. So it existed in the time with and the timeline in humanity's consciousness. So it was like dropped in. And then during the fall of Atlantis, some of those portals after that, because of the miscreation energy, we were shut off and it was cut off. You know, it's like, no, they're going to do that with it. Then we're just going to own it. We're going to take it back away from them. It's like kids with a toy and they get too destructive and you just take it out of their hand. 
So that's what they showed me when I went into this myself and traveled through the timelines, okay? And then somewhere, somebody was out there and the energy dropped in. And so it was like you're in Greece and they literally built a line gate, okay? It's like, it is a structure. It's one of the structures that still is standing there. So the energy was dropped in. There were structures that were built by humans, cosmic beings, whoever brought that energy in. And they literally built structures on this planet that were in alignment to these portals and these energies could be brought down. So it's like anchoring it in, anchoring it in, anchoring it in. So, you know, they went out and built rock structures and did all of this. We don't have to do that because they already did it for us. So then, then that it like it lines up with the prophecies within the Mayan calendars. And so that was like six wave energy. So it's waves of consciousness. And so we have to, our mind wants to have a map and put numbers on it. And, you know, we, where we're at with this now, what the ingredients are, you know. So, so the six wave energy that's talked about within the Mayan calendar and the Mayan prophecy, that was that time period. Humanity went through the struggles of the darker, denser energies, okay? until they came to, to another consciousness that we will use the word more uh, less dense, elevated, the words that we use to describe that type of stuff. It was more enlightenment. So the people before us did that. We did it. Some of us were there. You know, it's like we already anchored this in because we're part of the all, whether it's ancestral or it's our soul or whatever. It, we were there during those time periods and we anchored it. It's like anchoring the light back in. Okay. So we go along with this and then there's another wave of consciousness that starts coming in. And we move, start moving into the seventh wave of consciousness and the industrial age. And what did we do with it? We built a freaking atomic bomb and dropped it. You know, it's like, whoops, there we go again. Oh no, we took it. Uh, knowledge that they were given us and created more misinformation, more destruction. Okay, so what does that do? It's like all of those little filaments in the light body, in air light body, in the light body, the Homer Kaba of of the Earth grid itself. It, you know, because we went and blew up stuff. So that happened. And, it, and then the ones of us that were probably most of us on this call were born after that time period. We had to come through that. We had to come through all that debris and that all of that energy that was out there, fragmented, you know, consciousness and sign up and say, this will never happen again. It won't happen. We won't do it. We're coming in. We need, we need the, the waves, you know, the light, the way showers. We need them to embody this and come in. So we all put our little parachutes on and we start dropping in, dropping in, dropping in. So, so that's what happened during that time period up until now. So every time in humanity's consciousness, we all work with this, if you want to call it that, open, expand, receive, to bring in those light particles, the yami essence energy, and we say, yes, I'll be the one that embodies it, then it lifts all of that for all of humanity, okay? Because Gaia is going through this ascension process. She's doing it. She's got it down. She's moving through it, and we get to go along on the ride, and through her ascension, she's anchoring it so humanity, humanity can transcend into enlightenment and back into unity soul. And so any self-service is world service because anytime you serve yourself to reach a higher bandwidth of consciousness, you're serving all of humanity. So there's a part of that, that, that is what that is, where no matter where it is with people, even when it seems like it's lower denser energies that are happening and it may even look out of greed, well, it's still raising consciousness in some level to whatever the next bandwidth is that we can bring in. Okay, so it got us up to that. Now we're in seventh wave. And then 2011 energy came in and when we moved into eighth wave, eighth wave is when the, all of this happened. 
It's like when all of the computer stuff came in, we went into that. Now we're global. You're in Austria. I'm in Kentucky today. We're right here in front of each other. That went through the minds. We can move that fast now. It brought us into unity. It's like now we all connect with each other. We know we're one. Oh my God, there's other people out there that think like I do. They're even in other countries. It's not just me sitting here by myself. So it brought us into that. So when that started happening, it started aligning all of the energies within the brain. So then like all these neuroreceptors, binary codes, binary codes came in. That's what that energy was. And then it started all connecting, moving through, moving through into this energy off the script. So in 2011 came through, and that was in the Mayan calendars, anchoring in not wave consciousness. So that energy, we have been anchoring that in since 2011. So a lot of the blend now of the energies that people talk about on this state of the landscape is uh, Carl Tolleman wrote a lot of work and did a lot of work around the Mayan prophecies and his theories with the ninth way. He put the information out on the uh, out. It went out in all of the well. So people took that consciousness, other time periods of astrology insight on this day, wrapped it all up in numerology. Okay. And so it's a blend. It's a blend of several things that have came together. So it's like this big beautiful cake that has the foundation and then another layer of icing and then another foundation and then another layer of icing and then another layer and then we've got sparkles all over the top of it you know we're sprinkling it out so that's really what the energy is it's a blending of energy it's not one thing and then you oh the i missed the part of the, in the building that the pyramids was filled i may have said that and so that alignment in this gate period the three main pyramids there line up with three stars that are in the Orion, which is the Milky Way, okay? So that energy is there too. So it, it does come from several different things. There is no right, wrong, good, bad with any of it. So what happens is every year, it's like people take the information that they're reading everywhere and more people have channeled added to it. And then that wave goes out to the next wave of consciousness. And then it, it carries forth and it carries forth. And what they showed me was each year during this time period in the time gates of what's happening and the planetary influence that's out there, another layer gets added to it. So right now, last year, we were in the total, total um, the point of totality in the United States with that total solar eclipse that came through. So we were in that energy then. So there was a whole different wave of consciousness that was added to it with the ominescence energy and the particles that were received into the system and into the brain and what it did to our binary codes and the alignment of the divine masculine and the divine feminine that we had all been working for. So we were supported with that energy. Okay. So then that energy, it comes forth. It didn't dissolve. It came in. It's there. So we do move it forth. So, so people pick up that piece and then they write about it and then they add it into the mixture that's already been there. It's like improving a recipe. So that's kind of what's happened with it. So if you, you know, people, if you go off on Google searches to try to find the information, which I did, <laughs> and then I just went to the planets themselves. So right now, this year, all these planets are in retrograde that mm -hmm. you spoke of earlier. We've got a bunch that are in retrograde. Yeah, I think there's like six. Yeah. So Venus came to me last week. Well, who's not in retrograde? Venus is not in retrograde, okay? She's like, so he, this is how they showed it to me. They showed it to me like, like a buffet table at a party and kind of all the gods are in there with their elbows, <laughs> you know, and they're going at it. And then suddenly the door opens and they all turn around and they step back. So that's what the retrograde is, like they all step back. And Venus just walks in, in all her grace and glory and harmony, okay? So her influence and where she's at right now, because she moved 
into something on the 6th, or whatever that was, I don't know, but it's, all, I channeled all of this first, and she showed me all this, and so she's very strong in my own personal chart, so I didn't know if it was a personal thing for me, okay, if that was just information for me or not, and she showed me how to connect to that, to take the exalted energy when the other planets are in retrograde and utilize it, take it, embody it, put it in, get it all into your cells because that's what to focus on. Instead of going to what, it wants to tilt us a little bit negative, if you want to call it that, just out of words to say, you know, <laughs> with the retrograde stuff. So look at what's retrograde, what's not retrograde? You know, Jupiter was, it went out, it's open right now. It's like a planet of, you know, abundance, expansion. Venus is all about harmony, balance, love, beauty, creativity. She brings all of that to, to the forefront. So this gateway in chemism, <laughs> what they've showed me is it's saturated with that exalted energy. And so she, it, her energy is here for that, for those portals to be open, to embody that in your own in your own body, in your own cell. Does that make sense? Yeah, awesome. So this is about embodying the grace, the the harmony, the wisdom, the creativity, beauty. the beauty in, in your life, not just like physical, but like it like the beauty of life, right? Yes. Passion, then, all of that energy. So so she's really strong. And then the very next day. After I received all this information, one of my astrology friends that does um, Egyptian astrology, Ruby Faulkner is her name, she posted this whole thing about Venus and exactly where she was at. And I mm -hmm. called a couple other astrology friends that are more esoteric in their thought, you know, in their expansion with how they allow the information to come into them. And said, hey, does this make any sense at all? This is what I was shown. And they were like, oh my god it like changes the whole outlook you know when people are like spinning out and they're coming in and saying what's retrograde in what's it doing in my chart and blah 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 it's like no focus on what's exalted right now yeah what is that that's open why bang your head up against a closed door like, you know it's i see it like the revolving doors you know it bangs and stuff that you go in and it's like if it was moving too fast and you just yourself on the glass it's like why step into that this door over here is wide open it's just like you stand at it and it goes boing, it opens and you just walk in. Mm -hmm. awesome yeah and that's a great perspective that's a great way to look at it because you're right we're you know we in the media you know the focus is on the negativity and what is retrograde and what to do about it they're not focusing on what is direct and to focus on that right mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got this big revelation and I'm like, okay, do others, do astrologers know this? It's kind of like when you get this huge download and you think, oh my God, I've discovered fire. And you know, you're like, oh, I've got it. I've got it. And then you found out they made Vix a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just something that they already all know. But everybody I called, they were like, oh my God. Because your brains have been trained to decipher through that and to dig through all of that and to look at it in that way. Yeah. And so it was like the, you know, I, I came in and I was like, who do I call? Who do I call? I just got this information in my whole body. I was buzzing so much. It felt like my teeth were buzzing in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. And and then so I, I got a hold of a couple people and I was like, is this just because I'm Libra with a Taurus moon and they're both ruled by Venus that I got this so strong? And um, and they were like, oh, God, no. This is like in society. This makes sense. Awesome. So what, and what are the societal planets doing right now? Because like Mars is in retrograde. It's an interpersonal planet. And it's, you know, about anger and all kinds of things like that. And it's kind of taking the back seat right now while there's reflection going on. And Uranus is getting ready no it did go it went into retro it went into something uranus is something on the sixth which marks like the next seven years and so uranus is a society planet 
you know, with like when Uranus changes, then it Neptune, some of those are when generational changes happen in consciousness and what's being embodied. So that, if you were going to take off and look at your astrology, I would also, on a personal level, look to see where you're, what's happening in your Uranus, what house that it's in, where that affects you at, and what that energy is for you to embody. Because it's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but the social energy that's there, is that's what Venus showed me. <laughs> so that's what we're in. That's the time period that we're in and the gateway that we're in. And to connect to that part of your aspect that has that, that knows how to embody that and to really bring that energy in. Awesome. Thank you. And so somebody, Sylvia, just said uh, Uranus just entered Taurus. Okay. So I knew it just did something different. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I'm not into, I, I don't know enough about it to even say what that means. So for me, it's, it's just about, okay, so we are, you know, um, at a collective consciousness level, because it's all in the friggin' media. I mean, somebody, I'm not going to say who, no names, names at all, but somebody posted something on Facebook. And basically what they did was they copied the whole article and posted it as if there's their, their own post. And it's like, why don't you just paste the article there, you know? And, but it, it's, it's been seen many, 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 many times, right? And right. people... I saw that it was like how the like I said I can get on here and just parrot something else that's been written. Yeah. So instead of looking at it as well, there's no truth in any of this stuff. <laughs> just new age bullshit. It's not <laughs> because it's been it's taken the different things and it's layered it together and it's created this energy of this now that's been put in humanity's consciousness and carried forth and carried forth with another wave of energy that comes into it. That's how the creation stories are created. Mm -hmm. It's like we, that's how the mind expands and another concept has come in. You know, it's like, like my daughter's 27. Her friends don't know what a corded telephone, they don't even know what that is. You know, it's like there's a whole nother concept just from my lifetime of how we talked on the telephone right. and what that is now. So it, we, you know, it carries forth. It's like it keeps moving and keeps moving and keeps moving. So that's what the, it, that's what this conglomeration of this sphere is. And it is alive. It's alive. It has the energies to it, the layers of the ingredients that have been put together. So basically, we've been, we created this. Like somebody gets an aha, somebody else gets an aha, and all the energies went into it. It's like, you know what stone soup is? That's like when everybody brings an ingredient and puts it in the soup, and you know, maybe you only had a tomato and I had celery, and mm -hmm. everybody adds to it, and then at the end, you have this beautiful soup. Well, that's what this is, Okay. And so, that's, that's my perspective of it all. <laughs> that's great. No, thank you. That's why you have me on because, you know, I was doing all of this and it's like, you know, I carry this big, huge thing of integrity and I don't, I don't want to say something that's not, um, but I have to take back or back up on or something like that. Well, so I just went into the energy myself to see what they, what they, what's out there. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And like everything is your own perspective or your own interpretation of what's going on, right? We all have it's it's like what you can take in and what you can synthesize yourself at the time. Yeah, exactly. You know, we have so, our own filters and so it goes into wherever that is because there's things in my life that I see to be true today that, you know, a few years ago I would have thought wasn't. Yeah, absolutely. Or more than a few years ago, a few decades ago, but you know. <laughs> I remember when I didn't know what a chakra was, you know, and, and then you go through all of it, and now I don't even, it's like I didn't know all of it. <laughs> exactly. I remember a time when I didn't know who Archangel Michael was, and I was like, really? It's like, really? You yeah. actually went through that? Metatron identified himself to me and told me that he stood beside me, and he was who was bring, helping me bring in the, what I call the retonement codes, and, and I was like, Oh, he's, I don't know who this is. And the person that I was working with that was holding space for me while I was channeling and this was coming in, 
I thought, I was like, what is a Metatron? It sounded like a petroleum company to me. It was like, I had no idea. And then I went on this crazy Google search to find, and then some people that, you know, called him Lucifer, and then other people said that he was the right hand of God, and then I was just like, I don't know what any of this is, you know? And it's like, he, and now I get that. Because he told me back then he wasn't my God, that I knew him from the creation committee and that he was just helping me remember the sacred geometry. Yeah. I get it now. I didn't even, I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. A lot of times we don't get stuff until much later, you know? So yeah. I totally, yeah, I, I, I just re I had an ep uh, epiphany about something in the past couple of days that it's like, oh, 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 I get it now. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got it. Um, so I have a question from, oh, I can't read very well, so I'm, I'm hoping your name is Darlana. I can't read that. Um, and she says, I would love to know why some people, such as herself, seem to find days like today in astrological terms to feel great and be easier for us, while others seem to be on the opposite. What is available for me to make days that aren't like this easier for me so that I don't feel so tired? So, which is a great question because I was going to ask that question too. Because so some people are affected by the energies uh, of what's happening with the planets and so on. Other people are not. Um, so those of us who are, what can we do? I mean, Brown. I, I have some ideas, but you know, what can yeah. I do? <laughs> well, I mean, yesterday I was out most of the day, but it was it, and when you feel like you're out or you need to sleep or you're really sleepy or any of that's going on. I call that God shell. It's like you, the physical body has to go into a zero point of, so the consciousness can be uploaded and upgraded. It's just like on your computer when you put a new program in or you get a new update. Yeah, you have to reboot. Shut down and go in, you know, to be rebooted. That's yeah. what's happening. It's like we, we are only taking it in and assimilating it, okay? And so if there's parts that you haven't cleared yet that are connected to these energies. So let's use Mars as an example, since Mars is the planet of anger and it's a personal planet. So you may feel real antsy at the rest of society right now because Uranus is a society planet. And if you've not cleared that energy within yourself, then it irritates you. You know, so, so it's that. So some of it is what have you already cleared in your own system and what have you not cleared? Um, I'm not to go on about my package right now, but I am. It's like in there, there's one that's the, that is the disapproval matrix. They just showed me the disapproval matrix and how that was put in humanity's consciousness and we created disapproval was not a god code yeah, of course. it did not come from that higher aspect mm -hmm. and i just got that like maybe a week or two weeks ago something like that and oh my god it gutted me when i went through that and cleared the disapproval energy from all of my cells and I saw it and I kept thinking, what is this? I had worked over and over and over on non-acceptance. Zillions of times on non-acceptance. So it, it, it goes into the same matrix, but it's a different flavor. Mm -hmm. And that energy was so big. And what brought it up? Okay, that the eclipse that we had, the energies that were there for the eclipse, uh, I think it was like we had solar lunar and we're getting ready to have another solar. Yeah. So the energies are bigger, if you want to call it that. They're like larger, more expanding. It can bring it into your consciousness. And so I was really working with that because I've been doing a transmission grid here where I've got all these grids set up at the house and every day I'm sending out transmissions to people. So it was bringing up in me. Mm -hmm. I got, I don't do the political thing. I got so caught up in Facebook on how I was seeing some stuff and I was so upset. Oh, I almost knocked my computer off the thing. I got so upset. I was so upset about these children and all of this stuff. Okay. And I, I it was just like, it was eating me up at the core. And I, I went into it to, cause it was an opportune time to release and bring harmony into your own life. And I was like, what am I in disapproval of? 
and and when I went into it and started giving gratitude that I was not the one that had to embody any of that this time, that that the you know that there was a consciousness that was happening so we could see this in the world and we're not balanced yet. And there are both sides of the players and and what were in our political field. And I was in so much gratitude that they had embodied that consciousness this time. And I didn't have to embody it. Somebody else is doing it. And when I went in that and had this deep heart gratitude for that, and that they were doing it, that they were wearing that energy to bring this to the consciousness, to make these rules and separate these families. I didn't have to be the one doing it. And when I had so much gratitude for it, something in me shifted. And then I went into the disapproval matrix and they showed it to me and how it was all wrapped up in our mind, how we took it in. And as I moved through it and cleared it from my own system, and I would, you know, I asked why I'm, when I'm doing the work, well, what is that? Where did that come from? It's, I'm kind of, you know, it's a little schizophrenic when this stuff's coming in. Um, Cause I'm in so many multiple dimensions at the same time. And when I went to download creator's definition of whatever the opposite of disapproval is, approval, well, creator didn't even know what disapproval was. It was like, that's a human concept. You all did that. And when I went, why did we do that? What were we doing that we decided we needed disapproval? Where did that come from? And then that started being carried through humanity's consciousness. And they showed me that it was when uh, we did it to stay together. Because if you disapprove me, then I do everything I can to be approved. And then you stay a mess within the family unit. The people of the clan did it to keep their land. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody was holding on to stuff. So then you'll stay and, 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 and keep on trying to be approved. Right. And that we do that in family units. We do it in our family constellation. We do it in society. And, and, and so that that's how we, as they gave us free will. So that's one of the miscreations that I'm calling. Right. It's a miscreation code that humanity created and went, oh, aha, we need this. And so we have free will. So they stood back, you know, they're like they stood back and let us do all of this until we until we realized we don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. When I cleared all of that out of my system, everything in me feels different. I feel like a whole different being than I felt like at the beginning of the sequel season. It's like I was so saturated from disapproval energy because I it had been used to control me my whole life. And so last year this time I came off of my own journey, but it is my journey because it's my creation to come back into family. And I had, had because of different all kinds of things that happened. My brother died, my granddaughter was born, she had complications. I mean big, you know, big huge shifts. Well so I, but I had to come back to family to embody all that because I'd walked away from all of them. I had never felt real attached to any of it, you know, but I had been a rebel instead. I used that energy in that way. So I had to go back to embody it, to walk past it all. And now today, looking back from a year ago, I can, I understand it now. And I never got drugged down in any of the big, huge stuff that was happening, why it was happening, I could witness it, but I was still there in it, you know? And so this disapproval energy had got so, I got so saturated in it. So when it popped the other day, it's just like, I'm in a whole different space. Everything, it's huge. It's like one of the... You know, every time we get to another level, we think, oh, my God, it's like, I've never seen this before. I've never felt this way before. And I truly, it's like <laughs> one of the biggest things I've seen for myself. Wow. Does that make sense? It does. And, you know, Darlena, thank you, Darlena, for um, telling me how to pronounce your name. Darlena is asking, you know, how does disapproval energy differ from judgment? From what? From judgment. 
Oh, it's different. It, and it's just a little octave of energy. You know, it's just a bandwidth. So there's a, all of them. It's kind of like that non-acceptance, disapproval, and judgment. It all goes together, but then they each have their own octave of it that, that comes in because it goes into humanities. It's like little threads, and it each ha it's like a thread in the tapestry. So all of those threads may not accept it, mm -hmm. but each one of them have a little bit of different frequency to the encodement of the bandwidth and how it goes into your system. So if that, if judgment was used instead on you, then you may carry that. And it could have something to do with your own chart and that kind of energy and how it was used on you is what they're telling me right now. But each one of them have just a little bit different flavor. It's like different flavors of chocolate. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, it's all chocolate, but milk chocolate and dark chocolate, you know, they taste a little bit different. And then you got caramel salted chocolate. So... So they're all chocolate, they, but they still have different flavors to them. Does that make sense? Yep, I think so. Um, and there was a question from Nicole a while ago, um, and she's asking if it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate, I wanna know. So she's asking, can you talk any more about the Blu-ray energy and Blu-ray beings? Did you say that you identify as one? I don't know if I said that or not. I, they connect with me, I don't, um, the there's different it's just like the chocolate flavors <laughs> yeah, it's, it's when you were talking colors. about the lyran energies right you're talking yeah, about the lyran energy yeah 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 with that energy so with those energy though because there's blue rays there's blue energy that comes from palladians and then i see the that the code line people is the blue ray energy and then there's another blue because they're different colors of blue so there's another blue ray energy that goes has that that comes it comes from another uh like galactic center if you want to call it that so different colors of blue come in from different energy sources that way so there is a um they're not a, they're not i don't know that they've been labeled and it's like they um it could be what some people are calling like the what is it those blue bird people the avions could be the same as some of that because I've drawn them, you know, I'm an artist too. And, and sometimes that the way I connect the things that are coming to me, I draw them. And then after I sketch them out, then I start connecting to them. And I did this drawing. And then when other people started talking about that energy, it's like, oh, that's in my sketch pad. That looks exactly like the being that came to me. And they identified themselves as mentors and they and they haven't always been able to get here and at certain times when these energies um these bandwidths move then they're able to bring the ray into us okay and so it may be it may be blue but maybe it's more indigo or maybe it's like more um i'm seeing like the color of kanat that blue with the silvery color to it it's like it may they may have different colors like that they all work within that energy and blue is, you know, that spirit, that spiritual consciousness, spirit energy coming in. So they work in different parts of that and they bring in a deeper color of that to our system. So some of us, when we embody because of the work that we've already done and where we come from other places, you know, we come in on certain rays, certain mm -hmm. rays of energy, okay? So we embody that, our essence is that. We, we carry that ray, our soul ray that we come in with. And it's because of the work that we've done over and over and over. So like in different points of consciousness, like when people could identify the indigo kids and when, you know, that they could see the indigo ray in their field, okay? It's like there's another ray that's being embodied here in humanity's consciousness. So they probably came from one of those systems. And then, mm -hmm then you start seeing the crystalline children and then the rainbow children. So they're coming in because they've already accumulated all of those rays in their consciousness. So they're coming in with the rays to try to embody this stuff, this tree, you know, this flesh. Mm -hmm. We're already in the flesh. And so we're trying to gather 
the different rays from all of the other places to be that expansion of the Ami essence energies of all of that pearl essence rainbow energy. We're doing the same way, it's just a different way in the, how we're doing it. We're all going to the same consciousness. Does that, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? I do, yeah. That's what's happening. So the children that are being born, so some of them are, you know, people we knew that left and they come back because now they can come in and embody that energy in that way. So that's what we're doing. We're connecting our colors. It's like we're, you know, it's like, oh, instead of having just the 12 pack of Crayolas, <laughs> you know, 400 pack of Crayolas. So every time we embody one of those, that energy, like I came in as a seventh grade frequency. I'm in with seventh grade um, mind construct to be able to connect to that. Okay. And I got that a long time ago, but I, and so I'm like a violet ray or something. And I didn't understand what that meant either. And now I get it. It's like, that's why I'm like, okay, so angels are fifth dimensional energy and they come from that ray. They, that doesn't really do a lot for me. <laughs> but now I understand why, because I came in and with this ray to start with. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So different people are on different levels of that. And there's no right, good, wrong, bad to it. It's back to the ingredients. Like each ingredient is needed to make the cake rise, you know? So that's, that's what's going on that way. So they come from different things. There's no just one blue people or one blue planet or one species of blue. There's more than one. Yeah. Okay. Did I answer awesome. her? Thank you. Um, and so Martha's just writing about um, Lionsgate is when the central sun, the planet Sirius and the great pyramid of Egypt are in straight alignment and Sirius brings us the indigo Blu-ray to help beings on planet Earth. Yeah, that's, she said, that's what I know about it. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the concepts that's out there within that energy of what I was discussing. Yeah, awesome, thank you. And so, um, I forget now who, I think it was Darlena. Um, so some of the stuff that, you know, I do when, you know, there's lots of energies, lots of flux, lots of like stuff oh, is yeah, coming at me. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to show really quickly is, you know, sometimes a lot of that stuff is that's coming up is just to show you what some of the patterns you are still dealing with or some patterns yeah. that are still coming up. And so it's a great time to actually consciously say and choose, you know what? Uh, no, I'm not playing that game anymore. I'm done with that. And so I like to, you know, meditate, uh, do some sort of guided process of some sort, you know, drink lots of water, go outside for a walk. Just really be conscious of what your body is requiring and requesting. So if you get tired, you know, take a break, right? Take a nap because that will help to integrate the energies. And also, you know, sometimes there's lots of clearing and releasing happening, right? So allow your body to also be involved with you in the process and give it some ease by listening to it and asking, talking to it, communicating with it. And doing what you can by, you know, drinking more water. <laughs> I have lots of water. I'm drinking lots of water. And when I get tired, I take a nap for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, for me, I like to go for a walk. Believe it or not, my husband's probably laughing. But I do. When I'm outside in the fresh air, <laughs> even if it's in the middle of the city, I can breathe more. And there, it gives my whole body and being a bit more ease, right? So if you can do that, that would be great too. And, you know, I have lots of programs that, you know, uh, and listen to other shows. Kim, Kimberly has lots of programs and freebies on her website, and I'm, hopefully you got the free gift that was in the email as well. Use all your tools, and that's the thing. Sometimes we forget to use our tools, so use your tools, okay? Yeah, I use essential oils. That's one of the things, because I've got all these grids set up, so the energy is pretty high in the house right now because of the transitions that I'm doing. And, and so I'll, you know, I'll go through different ones. I'm going to do it. I want to do a group process with people and we can open up your the axle and axis. There's actually that, uh, the cerebella chakra yeah. that's right there. Yes, the please. yes and please. that one's been coming up really strong for me. And I've really been seeing it in people, how it's calcified. And when, and, I mean, in my neck has been popping like crazy. It's just like, I'm doing this. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and me it's too. snapping and popping in there. And it's yeah. that old calcification of that. 
So what I'm seeing in the space that I'm holding and the people that I'm working with is that we're getting all those crunchies out of there. It's like, you know, we've been working on our third eye and our heart chakra for a long time and, and you know, moving from the heart chakra is actually carries the wounded stuff into the high heart. And then this little place here at the throat right there, this is called the spirit speaks point. That's right there at where the clavicle is. It's called the what, so sorry? Spirit speaks point. Spirit speaks point. And so there's a little chakra there. Mm -hmm. And so that's opening up and cause all this, we've been working on this as a group, society and unity, this is opening. So this part is like ready to blow out and, and where we've been opening our third eye too. So that, even though these chakras have been open and we've been working on that expansion within the consciousness, that part that holds our heads on, that little part back there, there's something happening with it. Um, what because I've been really seeing it a lot. What I'm getting, why I'm saying that, is that there was a lot of um, past life consciousness, soul consciousness from past life, the karmic energies that were corded in through that into that silver cord, you know, that holds us here. And so it looks like we're in a release point to move past that, and we don't have to carry any of that anymore. You know, we, we came in to do that, and it's like the soul's free to move out of that energy and into back into unity soul. And that's what it is that we're moving into because, you know, we said, oh, I'll carry this, and now we've done it. So there's like a clearing happening. So it looks like that calcification in there is releasing so that we can move out of that. I'm seeing it like the dog chasing its tail and then move, you know, into that spiral, which that's what we've been doing. And that's what part of this energy is. We're in this spiral that we're going up. You know, that's what ascension is. We don't keep running around because I have people go, oh, well, you can't release that. That's your soul contract. And it's like, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. You want to release that. You don't want your soul to be bound by oaths and vows that it took in other times mm -hmm. and the family and who wants that i don't want to bind any anything up i sure don't want to bind my soul up so that's what i'm seeing with that but we'll do that and whatever else I, awesome. I did get earlier to do that one and then maybe we'll do that in it because i didn't know if i should do that first with everybody before we ever started but we'll do that and then i'll bring in whatever other energies that are here whenever it's time to do that, okay? Awesome, thank you. So um, let's let's talk about the special offer because we are at the top of the hour. So let's talk about the special offer really quickly and then we will do all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. So for those of you who are on the live page, you can just click on the special offer. Those of you who are not, um, you can go to alara.at forward slash show forward slash Kimberly. <laughs> Caroline says, I already bought it. <laughs> Awesome, Caroline. Um, all right, so the, the this is a brand new package, actually. When I was looking at it, I, I thought it was the same as like before, and as like I realized, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's like two or three that might be similar, but it's the rest of it is like brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. I made this since you asked me, Friday to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Last it's brand new package. I said, oh, I couldn't do that it's when I started doing this again. But it was brand new and this energy was there. So it's like, okay, I've got to share all of this. I don't have my screen in front of me and I didn't open up my oh, document. I, I, so can, I, I can do it. The order that they're in. Hold but on. I can do I, it. I'm afraid that I'm afraid I'll lose something if I go to that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, let's, so just go, what, let's just go right to the thing, Majiggies. Where are we? Hold on. Ah, da, da, package A. <laughs> yeah. So what I created this for is this the, the awakening of this enlightenment codes that are here now. So so like I said, I've renamed these codes several different times, and that's what it is. It's source codes. And it feels like the energy that we're in right now, that this is supporting the enlightenment and the enlightenment. And when I say that, it's not just the mental construct of that and how that's been labeled. It's like the enlightenment of everything, body, soul, spirit, mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what the energy that's around that is about. So, um, 
the first MP3 just goes into that explaining all of it and what is carried within the series. And the disconnect from the mind matrix, now that is a process that I do and that could have, that MP3 may have been in packages before. The reason I put it there, because it's what I use and every single piece to get you to, to, to get to the next level. So that way, if you have it by itself and you can listen to it, then you can start disconnecting from those mind matrices. So the greater aspect is the team that I work with, and they come from the greater aspect of all that there is, that all, not just Earth, like all existences that ever have been. And they showed me the mind matrices and how how we're connected into that and how to disconnect. So. I'll try to walk everybody through that real fast. How to disconnect from that. And so we have it in our, our the chaotic mind of humanity. So it's important to do it. And you can use that. When she asked earlier, what can you do? Disconnect from the chaotic mind that's out there. So when I do that, I just sit, I breathe in, drop into my core, and ask to disconnect from that chaos. And when you do it, you bring your own psychic energy that's been corded into everything because we've got it out there all the woulda coulda shoulda so we know what the next move is well when we disconnect from that and bring all of that back into us and then drop it down into our heart then we're here in our center where all awareness is we don't have to be out there into everybody else's mind you can never figure out another mind it's like they're not rational <laughs> and you can't, no matter what you do, you can never figure it out. So that ha brings you back into your center and you won't feel as tired. You won't feel, you know, as worn out because you're not out there in everybody else's energy. You're, you bring it all in. So that's what happens in that. And I use that through all of the packages um, to take us to wherever it is that we're going. So um, uh, this one was actually created at the end of last year when we had a lot, the clearing up for the lot. It's all about the solar flowers. I can't say that word today. Boy, I'll tell you what, since I've been back in Kentucky, I already had a Southern accent, but I was listening to myself the other day and I've got extremely more hiccupied. <laughs> <laughs> I tickled at my, I sat and laughed at myself. I was listening to myself when I said children and I said your children. <laughs> I got so tickled because my accent is getting deeper and deeper into my southern roots. Mm -hmm. anyway, okay, so that talks a lot about that, what that does in the brain, and then we go through the processes of, of going through the brain and the binary co codes and the energy that uh, comes in when there's a lot of solar activity and what it really does inside of the brain itself. So all of these um, MP3s, I do teachings in the beginning. That's like the first part. So they're part ones and kind of twos on each one of them. And then we go into a healing temple that supports the energy. And I use light language because light language bypasses the rational mind. And mm -hmm. so that's encoded within all of my work that I do. So that's what happens in the, the healing temple. So that the miscreation timelines, where spirit has showed me that and where that's at and how that exists. So it's just connecting the mind field from those miscreation energies and bringing healing to that and healing to the times that you said, you know, we're a part of that. Because if you weren't a part of it yourself, more than likely your lineage was somewhere in it, you were a part of, mis you know, in that miscreation. And um, so it's clearing out all of that energies around, around that. So this new one, that's that releasing of the disapproval energy. It's brand new. It just came in two weeks ago and it came in since those, what I said, the eclipses. It came in at the time of that um, eclipse we had two, three weeks ago, the first one. So it's the energy that was came to the planet, connecting to that planetary consciousness. In any of these, it doesn't really matter when I recorded them. And if you listen to them again in a year, they're still going to do something to you because it carries the energy and you will be at a different level and it will take you deeper into something because when I listen to it to edit it, that's why I was going out of my body a lot. Even though I had already done it, it 
was bringing me into cleaning my cells again. I can feel it myself happening in my own body. Mm -hmm. So that's what that one is. And then going into the, um, into the healing temple. So the cosmic rays came to me when I was living in Sedona and they basically showed me how they're here for us to come in and that the elementals are exhausted because they've been trying to hold everything together for so long. So they're here to help us reach this, um, new level the level that we said that we would go to so they're really here for support and they come in and clear out our system so they bring in those different rays to what has been our chakra system and the colors that have been within the chakra system because our chakra system never was set to be a particular color and to stay that way forever it's like as we ascend and move into this there the colors are lightening up and they're being more pastel. So um, that's the connection uh, to them and what they, how they showed me and how they work. And then this entering the line gate, I don't, this one was just recorded um, Sunday. It's brand new. I just did this for Sunday. So, um, and it's preparing us to move into it. And I'm actually talking about what Venus told me and what she showed me and then connecting to that grace and harmony and bring in that energy into your body now. So that one is brand new. I mean, I just, just did it. Um, and then the, the shift, the point of totality and the point of totality healing temple, um, that actually was what happened to me last year at the eclipse. So I was on the point of totality. I was actually setting on it because <laughs> it came right through this area. And so I got I asked a day or two later what happened in humanity's consciousness and spirit showed me what literally changed in our brain frequencies during that time period. So I talk about that some and what happens during the eclipse time and what is really happening within our brain frequencies itself and how our brain is integrating and then we go into the healing temple um, with that and embody those energies that's there. So sometimes I tell people you should always listen to the programs and exactly how I've got them numbered because each, you know, each one builds on top of itself. This is all kind of an alchemical process within this package. So if you're guided yourself, that this is the one I need today, like I need to go do the disapproval one, I know this is the one I should do, then use your own inner guidance with that and, and go to that one. Use it in that way, and then you can go back and listen. And I realized in editing them that the talk part of the teachings, it's, it's looping the mind, so then the mind can either get so confused that it surrenders and then it can go into the healing process. Mm -hmm. And that that's part of what teachings do, you know, when we're talking, that it's actually a part of it because it's moving those things out. So then the, the brain can realign in a new configuration. As I'm saying that, I'm seeing it, remember Rubik's cubes and then how the, they're like all over the place and the colors don't match up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's doing that and then, then you go into the healing temple and then all the colors come into alignment. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And so. yeah, three, three phone calls. So there'll be three phone calls with that. I haven't set the dates to the calls. I don't know how long you run your replays now. So part of it'll be mm -hmm. that. And, the, and so when you sign up, there's a link to go to sign up to get the information. So make sure you do that. So I know, that you bought this and, and to get you the information about the calls. So we'll do three group calls. Um, and usually there are, I connect to the consciousness of the group and where the group is itself and bring in what they're ready for and where they, what's ready to move. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. They're pretty much channeled in the, in the now time of whatever's happening. Awesome. Okay, and yeah. so this one feels like we're really going to go into awaken these enlightenment, enlightenment codes that people are ready for that divine spark. Like we covered it all up so nobody else could see it. 
And then there's a Facebook group. Yeah, there's a Facebook group. And then Package B is all of that with a 30-minute session with me, a one-on-one. -on -one. And on the phone calls, I do question and answers. So you actually get work. You know, it's like, it's live. I don't know if I'm going to use Zoom or if I'm still going to use Instant Telesum. And I'm trying to decide which direction I'm going to go with that. Because mm -hmm. I have still been using the Instant Telesummit, but I'm thinking about going live with Zoom. So I do, if you have a question, and even if it's a personal question about you yourself, uh, you know, I address those too. Or if it's world consciousness stuff, then whatever it is. Yeah. So there's a time period at the beginning of that, and then we do a transmission. And what, are, what, what time zone are the calls going to be in? I am in the central time zone now. Mm -hmm. So I try to usually do those. I usually ask the group, Kana, but I usually try to do those on Saturday or Sundays around 11 o'clock my time because that the European people, you are like, what, six hours ahead of me? Yeah. But that way it's not so late. And then it's not too early for the California people, you know? It's <laughs> And I don't know, poor Australia, they just have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and is the personal session recorded? Yes. Awesome. If you want to record it, sometimes people don't. So, yes, it can be recorded. <laughs> That's awesome. Easy. Yeah. Cool. So, you want to do the, what are we doing now? Uh, do you want to do, uh, you want me to do the transmission now or? What are we doing today? What else are we doing? Yeah, whatever you want. But yeah, definitely a transmission to help us to move forward with more ease and whatever else. Um, whatever else. Whatever else wants to come through today. Yeah, since I've channeled the whole time anyway. Exactly. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. So how? If you don't have water, because at the end I'm going to oh, tell you to have water. Yeah. If you don't, that's okay, because we'll, I'll send transmission codes into your water, wherever your water is. But, so that part, if you hear me say that, don't panic. You can, you can either have it now or intend it to where it goes, because I'll yeah. always send energy in that way. And then you can use it um, for whatever you want to use it for. I'll talk about that a little bit. At the end. And you were going to address the back of the neck, body. right? Kimberly, you can address the back of the neck some more? Yes, yes, we're going to do that. Yeah. That's... Okay, so everybody just breathe in. I'm going to meet myself. Ready? Okay, so just breathe in and use your breath to come into your own being, into your own body. So with each breath, You disconnect from all of these energies, all of this talk, everything that we've been chit-chatting and all of that energy that's out there in the field. So just breathe and bring yourself into your own presence. So I step into the light of the divine where all things are possible and I ask to be sacred witness to bring in the codes, the source codes, the enlightenment codes, the codes of this gateway in the most beneficial way for each and every person within this group and for it to transcend out to all of humanity and for whatever time that you listen to this. Nekera sutori in Nakatara, she to Korea Tara Nasatari in Nakaritur Shatara, Sitiki Tara Sutor Shatara. So, what they're showing me, if you choose, you can put your hands at your heart and then bring them up above your head and then back down, and that opens up your lot body to receive. So we're going to ask to disconnect from that chaotic mind of humanity, that mind field that's out there. So we just ask for that to be done. And as we disconnect from that, our own energy, our own source codes, 
come in to our body, our own psychic awareness, our own psychic energy comes into the third eye, into our eyes. Feel that energy as it drops down and comes around into your heart. And you can settle into your own heart space, into your own sacred chamber. So from this point, invoke your all-knowing, your all-knowing aspect, your future self that's been connected to all your accumulated knowledge. For them to come partner with you, to stand in this sacred space, and to align with you. This is your inner awakened self that's already went through all of this and has that inner knowing energy. Feel what that feels like when you partner with that. So there's an infinity symbol that goes from your heart to the heart of that all knowing self, your future self, and your heart connect together as one. So breathe that in. And as you settle into that energy, any mind constructs that are holding you, sabotaging you from your own personal mind construct, from your soul, from your family, from your DNA, we're just going to ask to disconnect from that for this moment, for this time we call now. And we're going to activate this golden spiral energy that's here available to connect to these cosmic rays within your own Trinity codes of your human aspect, your soul aspect, and your spirit aspect. So this is your own pyramid, your own triangle. And that energy comes into your, I'm seeing it in body, and it opens up at your throat, that spirit speaks point that I, that I mentioned earlier, so that expands the throat into divine truth. So that wave of energy travels up through your vertebrates, opening, clearing, any calcification, all the traumas that have been spoken to you, through you, at you, and through your family lineage. All of consciousness, all of society, for that energy to clear within all of those vertebrates, And then you may want to touch it yourself right at, that, at your, the top of that C-spine where your axle neck list goes in that cerebellum chakra. The brain stem is right where that little indention is. You can put your finger there and just lightly massage that. And you may want to go both directions with it, whatever feels right to you. Go clockwise and counterclockwise. If you have an essential oil, you can use that, or you, we'll just send the energies to that. I'm going to send those uh, essences in. So I'm seeing sandalwood, frankincense, citronella. So there's an activation happening. Um, that little point there at the clavicle where that little V is, there's a point there and a point at the top of that C-spine. So you might want to touch both of those yourself energetically. I'm sending that vibration to you. And these two want to connect to each other. That energy is dropping into the heart. It's taking it in and it's activating the heart space. 
as the cosmic rays connect to us. But they're bringing in an omniscience, pearl essence energy, opal essence into that high heart. And that energy is dropping down through the core into your hara, your dantian, which is right below your belly button. That's your life force energy. It's also where the divine inner child lives. So it's connecting to that. And that energy of Venus that I identified as Venus, it's that ray of harmony and grace, is going into that center. Feeling up that creation, the creation codes within your creativity, connecting to your divine child, so that they have this free pass, this freedom to express the truth of who they are, they are through this divine energy, this harmony, and clear out any disapproval energies that have been sent to the child that they helped with in trauma. And that energy is actually opening up the root chakra and it's dumping out into earth. It's like Gaia's got her arms open and she's taking it all. She can transform that energy and use it for all of humanity's consciousness to help regulate templates and none of those were, there's no regrets within it because she can take that energy and utilize it. So you, your own, your neck might pop, mine just did at the axle neck, it's just like it's trying to come into alignment. So as that drops into Gaia's heart, feel that love and support that she has for you, how happy, she knew you were, that you would be here and the gift that you are to humanity and the vibration that you carry. She recognizes you. Feel what that feels like, to that acknowledgement and that it's safe to be acknowledged and the truth of what that is. And then that energy is moving up through the whole core through all of the chakras, all of the energy centers and signatures into out into parallels, timelines, collapsing any miscreation energies. Shatana na putore, shatara kiriatara, sutukuri tara na satakari, in the tori kara, shutukuri, satira na kariatara, onakari shete kari toro shitikiri. So it's bringing back in a fragmented particles and returning them to the pure light that they are. So different ones of you are gonna feel that going into different chakras, different areas of the body into your cells, to different octaves of consciousness. So that energy, that calcified energy that was there at the at the excellent axis, that's spiraling now. And so it, it's like a golden spiral. It's going all the way up like a vortex, opening and expanding. Past your trans out your crown, past your transpersonal chakra, which is up above your head. That's where the higher self lives. So this energy expands all the way up and connects to your solar codes. It's like your God realization energy. So feel that support from all the cosmic rays, the cosmic beings, the alignment that's there for us at this opportune time to align air consciousness. Oh, and bring these frequencies. So there's a, <laughs> the, the crowns being um, actually removed and new crowns being placed in. So 
it's releasing any old God codes that no longer serve. Shetana na koriyatara na sata kiri tara shoto kiri na tora shete koriyatara. So they're telling me that this energy will help you utilize to be able to see your divine self and the divine essence that you are through the eyes of creation and your role within that and what that is for you. There's like an energy of synchronicity to, to bring into the core and to be downloaded. It's like a divine synchronicity awareness to that and the truth of that and what that really is so that has to do with your own personal destiny codes and aligning that and to be able to see the truth of what that really is so breathe that energy in This portal, it's like it um, oversouls us. It's coming down through our whole entire being to receive these frequencies. You may see them in different colors. Right now I'm seeing a really pure white light with a blue glow kind of to the outside of it. And it's different bandwidths and octaves of blue. So different people are going to align with different constellations and different um, cosmic alignments and those energies. Remembrance. It's like the remembrance energies of what it was that you really came here to do. <laughs> when all these planets are retrograde, there's little openings in the timeline. And it's like they can drop in these little packages to us. So that's what I'm seeing it like. It's like the conveyor belt and like, oh, that one, we can drop that into that one. It's open. There's a clear gate to drop this in. So all these little packages of consciousness are being dropped into your system. It's like Santa Claus standing on top of the chimney, dropping the packages in. Whew. So breathe that in. We're going to activate our infinity symbols. There's one at our feet. It's that infinite support from Gaia and that energy activates into this grid to embody this energy. And then it moves up and there's another infinity symbol at your knees. And when that activates, it's how to walk forth with this energy. The infinite wisdom of that to feel the support, how to walk forth with it. And then there's another infinity symbol at your hips. And when that activates, it crisscrosses the root chakra and uploads up through the whole system. And that's those source codes of your infinite wisdom, the truth of survival, creator's definition of that, the highest level of it. Clearing out more of those miscreation codes of survival. And then the energy moves all the way up. Cross through the soul assimilates at the sternum, at the breastplate. Recalibrating your soul point to the highest level, what's most beneficial at this time. It's giving it a soul bath. It can take a break. Breathe that energy in. And that goes all the way up all the way back up to that transpersonal chakra to your higher self connecting to it unifying your god purpose soul purpose human purpose one unified working system of what that really truly is it's every cell of your body so breathe that in 
bring that awareness, that consciousness into this time we call now. So you might want to, as you come into your body, tap your body, activate it, move your feet. Breathe that in. So as you're coming into your body and back into this time we call now, I'm going to send the frequencies of the energy of what we did, uh, the waves into water. So you can utilize this water, you can drink it, you can put it in your bath water, you can take it like a homeopathy, sprinkle it in your fill, add it to whatever you want to. Uh, or you can just drink it now, whatever it is that you want to do. Put it in the commode and flush it, let it go out to all of humanity, all of the water. So I'm going to send these frequencies in to whatever water you intended to go to. No kore shate kere sete kere toro shate ana na kari tere stu tu kari shatare na satare kere tere sete kore ana shata kari toro shutore kere tare sete kere stu tare. I saw some stones show up with that that I didn't. I work with stone families, and um, a citrine showed up really big. And I saw that go in. Citrine is one of those stones for um, abundance. It grounds in abundance. It's a stone that never has to be cleared. You know, it clears other vibrational places that it's in. So I saw, I saw it showed up really big. Um, and I'm also seeing quinsant, pink quinsant, which is self-love. So that feels like that's the Venus energy representing it. It's a pretty soft pink color. So those are there. That essence went into your water. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. So how <laughs> how is everyone doing? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to drink my water. <laughs> Yeah, drink water. I've been doing the lemon water all really heavy this week with um, energies. Did you feel that at your at at the Texas and Atlas? Is that opened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I really needed it because um, it's like building up to this call. It's like it was <laughs> it was aching, you know, and uh, getting your attention. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. So Barb is feeling great. Nicole says, wow, feeling all a buzz. Torgan says, thank you. Thank you from Daniel. I felt a release uh, at the Atlas from Sylvia. Awesome. Caroline says, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So did we, cover, did we cover everything that we were going to in that transmission? I think so. Yeah, I guess activity. so. I just trusted that it's going to come in. <laughs> yeah. like, there was yeah, a no. lot really that happened on a lot of different levels. You know, it's it, it, there was different energies that came in, so it's there. Oh, I was, I was, Body, however, it is that we embody. You got something because you're yawning. <laughs> I know, right? And I was, I, I remember uh, thinking during the process, I was like, wow, this is a power packed process, you know. Um, yeah, and, and because I do see multiple dimensional and I'm able to do, like I, can, like I saw inner child, family crap, you know, <laughs> it's like soul stuff, and then the cosmic stuff. So when I say I'm multiple dimensional, when I'm working with people, that's how fast it is. It's mm -hmm. like when I go in, it's like walking into, you know, Best Buy or whatever you want, you know, uh, uh, and all the television screens are going at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I can see all of them and then they'll light up the which one to go to, you know, it's like, and so it's different for different people at different times. So it's like that. We were going this way, but then like this would light up and it's like, oh, what is that? So then I go to see what it is. And then the, that's how the. That's how the information comes in when I'm doing the processes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I loved yeah. it. It was, it was great. And um, I, I couldn't even tell you uh, now what all, what all we did because there, there, <laughs> there was a lot. Oh, yeah. And a new crown chakra. That's right. Yes. Oh, yeah. I saw him. Because when it got to that, 
to open that, I could feel all this pressure and it was like pushing down. And, and I was like, what is that? You know, why is this like not moving? And it's like, well, every, not everybody's had their crowns removed. <laughs> and that's what I'm seeing now that we're in this time period of not, not about repairing the chakras anymore or repairing the light body. It's like get new ones. It's time to embody new ones. So we're trying, you know, we've done all this work. So this, can, this these worn out discs that we carry can like be moved out and the new ones come in. Mm -hmm. So there was still a lot of, um, when I felt that pressure of that, it was that whatever has been put in humanity about what God is, you know, and it's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it. Oh, so much quieter now that the AC is off. It's like, wow. I didn't realize how much it was bothering me. I know. Uh, that's why I was, I was very sound sensitive today when I first got on with you and I asked because I moved a bunch of different places because the AC, uh, and then the fridge, my refrigerator was making some kind of crazy noises <laughs> and I was very sound sensitive today. <laughs> no, much better. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And um, a lot of tingles at the crown. Um, yeah, lots, lo lots. So a lot of people experience different things, you know. Um, it's like, it's just, we have, can we listen to it again? <laughs> yes, listen to it over and over. Um, did, could you all hear my cat? My no. cat, her name is Alice. She's Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, didn't well, hear the cat. She's usually pretty quiet. She's not, you know, she's a really quiet kitty. She doesn't really meow. She squeaks instead. And yesterday and today, oh my God. God, she's been so rowdy, and she was just crazy. Because if you saw me look over this direction a couple times, it yeah. was she was just going nuts. It was like, "What are you doing?" And she was meowing really loud. So I, when she kept doing that yesterday and today, I th I think she can see all the energies in the mm -hmm. house. You mm -hmm. know, makes sense. <laughs> and then she it's weird because when I'm walking, she's looking at me really weird, and then backing up from me. And I thought, I must be embodying so much of this line energy that she's just like, whoa. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. It's like, oh, they must, it must be because it's a lion energy right now, yeah. right? Right. That's what lions, I think. Lions yeah. a cat. Um, yeah. Because she's really being extremely vocal. And that is totally not like her at all. <laughs> she, like, she, and so I can really see that in her. You know, I mean, I was pressing on her body today to see if there was something physically wrong with her somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. that something had happened and that I didn't know it because she was being so vocal. And it's like, no. So anyway, that's what I kept glancing over at because I was like, <laughs> it's just funny. The cat is like, come in and she's like really participating in this. <laughs> well, Nicole was saying that her cat was hanging out right next to her the whole time as well. So yeah you know they, they also like it these types of energies right yeah. um and she's also asking do you feel that we're heading to one chakra i i see that the chakra system is obsolete is what i would how i would use that word and that we will not be functioning out of that anymore it's like the chakra system was showing up and we saw it in humanity because we didn't know how to process our emotions between our emotions and our mental field. Mm -hmm. And so we're moving out of that. So some of the people that I work with, I noticed it's like they don't have, you know, the lower chakras anymore because they're moving up into the higher chakras and the gateway chakras and they're like the chakras are we're going higher and higher in that. And I know years ago when all, my, my solar plexus was gone and I was like, oh, holy crap, what did I do? <laughs> I lost my solar plexus. And then I realized I wasn't functioning from that anymore, you know, from a, a self point. I moved into a different place. And so it wasn't like, oh, God, what did I do to myself that I gutted myself? It's like, hot damn, my solar plexus is gone. This is a good thing. I had moved from that past the abyss into my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I see that a lot now. 
So what she's saying, I would say yes, because it's going into a unified field. It's like that we won't be um, courted and we're and courting other people and working through the parts of that to get that energy externally. Mm -hmm. It's like we'll be in that unified field that's been talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're moving into. Does that awesome. make sense? Yeah, and she said that makes sense. That's what I'm feeling too. <laughs> yeah. Good. She's a wise woman for knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Anybody else have any other general questions around, about the Lionsgate, the energies right now moving forward or anything else to do with this kind of stuff? I'm Use I'm that to technique to disconnect from that chaotic mind. If you start feeling spinning out from other people, just sat down. You know, it's like somewhere you know how to do it. It's like they drop that into my consciousness. So if I know it, everybody knows it. And it's like, just ask to do that. It's like there's, you know, because we try to, we hook into that from a sense of survival. So we'll know what the next move is. And if we're not a part of that and we're in our own knowing, then we're, we're that synchronous. Oh, that was the new one that came in. I forgot. I just, as I said that, I hadn't done that before. That was brand new to that synchronicity. Mm -hmm. that to that synchronicity energy and what wanted to be embodied with that that was um that was a different flavor i i had never heard myself say that before and see i hear at the same time you all do you know mm -hmm. i don't know what's going to come out of my mouth <laughs> like i just let it come through so that was brand new yeah yeah awesome. I'll, have to make, I'll have to record that now <laughs> <laughs> well i can send you this recording and you can just snip it if you want you know something. Yeah. Um, uh, so Caroline's asking, will we, we will get emails regarding the calls and the personal sessions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a link for you all to go to and you connect to me and all of that happens then after you buy it, then that will happen. Okay. And Sylvia is saying definitely need to listen again. And Jay Shree is asking, what is the third eight, eight and the eight, eight, eight? Is there a three, eight, eight, eight? <laughs> oh, well. The the third eight would be because we're in the year of 2018. So there's an eight in the 18. Yeah. Because they say that different, in, different years of the numerology carry the different bandwidths. And so to the line gate, if there's more eights in it, and you can just about get eights out of however you want to try to concoct that. But there is an eight, eight this year. Right. Okay, we have that in the numbers. We're eight, eight that third eight on that okay so yeah. when it's three of them that's a trinity aspect to the to the eight energy and eight is infinity symbol it's it's abundance mm -hmm. it's all of those things so there's you can google all kinds of numerology about that yep um and how far out are you scheduling oh i don't it you know, I don't know at the top of my head right now what my schedule looks like, so I can't answer that in this particular moment. Probably, I'm not really sure. Probably sometime in, next week, probably. Uh, what, mm -hmm. what is today? I don't even know what today is. Yeah, I'm not sure what my, I've probably got gaps. It depends on what time zone you're in and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes I sense. I mean, sometimes it's different on different times. Sometimes it's two weeks before you can get in with me, but usually it's within that time period. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Great questions. Um, I, I am on Central and I am a morning person, so I'm up early. So, you know, it's like I'm. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. people, yeah, because this yeah. is what I do. So I'm not like, oh, it has to be after eight o'clock or whatever. So, anyway, I work okay. with people on it. So, so, Caroline, I will send you that link. I haven't got it yet from Kimberly. Oh, I sent it yesterday in an email. I'm sorry. Oh, they, maybe I missed it. Maybe okay. I, maybe I didn't get the email. <laughs> but I think I, I will... sent it in the one that has the, uh, that I sent the free gift in. So maybe you just didn't see it. Yeah. And, yeah. Or if you tell me who's bought the packages, because the only way I have their names and stuff is because yeah. I should have made a landing page. Anyway, that's next. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. So either either way, you'll get the information. Either I will send the, the names to Kimberly or I will send you all a link that you can just 
sign up on as well. We'll figure it out. Yeah, and if they go to my my business Facebook, Kimberly Pro Interlocking Mastery, um, I'm doing transmissions every day. So mm -hmm. they can connect to that and watch those. I did one today already. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a grid that was already in, so I didn't throw it in the package because I'm only doing it to the 13th. Mm -hmm. But if they want to be a part of that, the transmissions are going out daily to all of humanity and then and then there are people that have their name on it, so it's going straight to them. So they can watch that every day. Awesome. So that that's on my regular Facebook page. And and sometimes I put those on membership too. Awesome. So anyway. Cool. <laughs> that's something All right. I can connect into. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And so I will be sending out the recording and all that wonderful stuff in a little while. I think I'm I think I need to eat something. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to eat and you need to set <laughs> and just like let the process come in. Yeah, I need a little bit of time for me. So it'll the email will go out a little bit later than normal, but it's okay. Um it's all good. All right. So um yeah, so no, that, that that was wonderful, Kimberly. Thank you so much. And I really you know, I'm so glad that we were able to do this on such short notice, you know, and like so spontaneously. So thank you. Well, um, you know, I had done this work myself and connected to the timelines. That's on one of those MP3s and how to connect to your most beneficial timeline. And I actually pulled that in and was ready to step back into my world service. Mm -hmm. And and so I came in the house and you had Facebook messaged me. Mm -hmm. And because there was somebody else I, I thought about calling him and saying, hey, I'm, I'm supposed to do something. I did my own call on the 5th because I kept getting I was supposed to leave the 8th open, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. And so that's that synchronicity. Yeah. Because I got it really <laughs> strong, and I walked in, and you had Facebook messaged me. And that's why it was like, yes, hell yes. When you get hell yes in that spirit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I <laughs> kept, I kept getting, <laughs> I, I kept getting your name, like, you know, like, Contact Kimberly, contact Kimberly. I was like, okay, 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 it's fine, you know, and I did, so. Yeah, <laughs> so I was glad to be back with you, and to be live with you. That we I know, right, I know. Our own glow and our little eyes beaming at each other. <laughs> so much more fun, isn't it? Yeah. Um, awesome. All right, everyone, so thank you. I know for some of you, it's late, Torgan, good night from Norway. Good night, good night Torgan. <laughs> we'll see you next time. And Bye. And so just, you know, before we go, I just want to share a quick little plug for myself, because I never do. Um, I'm doing a, my 21-day series, a special summer series that's starting on Saturday. I didn't realize, but it's starting on Saturday for $21 for 21 days. And for those of you who have been part of my 21-day series before, I haven't had them so um, inexpensively priced in a long time. <laughs> So take advantage of it. We'll be clearing belief systems of what's getting in your way um, for 21 days. So I look forward to seeing you. And for those of you who have already registered, thank you. I look forward to playing with you. <laughs> yeah, so that's starting Saturday. So yay! And, you know, part, for part of that, it's so interesting. I'm going to be in Canada, right? So it's like I'm going to be on the Eastern time zone. <laughs> so it'll, be, it'll be weird. It's like, I don't even know how I'm going to do it yet. It's like, whose house am I going to be at? Um, but fun. It'll be fun. So yeah, I'm going to Canada next week. Next Friday, I leave for two months. It's like, wow, that's a long time. <laughs> I told my husband, he's like, you're going for two weeks, right? And I said, no, two months. <laughs> it's like, um, that's a long time. It's like, yeah. But we'll be doing some traveling. We'll be doing some classes I'll be facilitating in Canada and the U.S., so I'm so excited. So looking forward to it. So much fun. So it's changes, right? Changes. Yeah, big changes. Stepping into your world service. Yeah. yeah. So what are you all willing to step into now? Take a look at that. Ask yourself, what am I now willing to step into? All right. So on that note, <laughs> until next time, continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Sending you all much love and blessings always. And thank you so much again, Kimberly. So much fun. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye for now, everyone. Bye. Have a good night, afternoon, evening. I'm sure it's nighttime everywhere now. <laughs> bye. <laughs>